Hi, my name's Carol. Welcome to The Rhythm of Life. Our reading is taken from John chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 11. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The readings today lay out so clearly for us the relationship that can be ours with God the Father and with Jesus. We're left in no doubt of the closeness and intimacy, the love and care that there is for us knowing God and knowing Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. The relationship between the shepherd and the sheep is used in imagery throughout the Bible. We may not live the way people did then. These descriptions would have been very familiar to them. But then they can still help us in our understanding of God and Jesus in our lives. Jesus speaks not just as a shepherd, but the good shepherd. So not just someone with the skills that a shepherd needs. A bit like the difference between a skilled doctor and a good doctor. I'm sure you can follow my meaning. We've all been there at some point. And to be honest, you don't mind waiting an extra half hour in the waiting room if you're going to get a doctor who will listen. A good doctor not only has the skill, but the empathy. He or she makes you feel listened to and cared about. And that's what Jesus, the good shepherd, does for us. He cares for people. He cares about people. He showed love and compassion and care. He knows each one by name. Earlier in this chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus says, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Don't you think it's incredible that Jesus knows each one of us by name? and cherishes every single one of us. It always strikes me in the resurrection narrative that Mary's recognition of the risen Jesus comes when he speaks her name. It's in the being known that she recognises and knows him. Her grief changes to joy and her fear to rejoicing. At that time of Jesus in the Middle East, wherever possible, the sheep were gathered into a pen at night to protect them from thieves and the weather or wild animals. And these sheep pens could be caves or sheds or in open areas. They could just be an area surrounded with stones or branches to make up the sides. And then the shepherd would lay down across the entrance, acting as a gate letting the sheep in, protecting them and keeping them safe. The Good Shepherd places his body between the sheep and danger. He will die protecting the sheep. And so Jesus died for us, for lost people. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, actually gave up his life for us the ultimate life-giving sacrifice of our Good Shepherd on the cross for each and every one of us. If you have ever doubted your worth, 
know that he went to that cross willingly for you. That's how much you and I are loved and cherished by him. Jesus reminds them too that the hired hand paid to do a job, looked after the sheep, but that he may well flee at signs of danger to himself, but that the shepherd to whom the sheep belong will never abandon them. Each and every one is precious to him. I sometimes think that's a little bit harsh on the hired hand. Loyal and hard-working shepherds employed to do a job do exist. And it made me think of a few of the shepherds from my own journey of faith who have fed and nurtured and cared for me. But ultimately, their nurture is transient. They or I have moved away or moved on to other things. But I thank God for them, for all that they contributed in helping me to dig deeper and to grow in my faith. I could name a number of people, but perhaps just two for this time. Jim Dunn, our minister back in Scotland when I was growing up, had a huge impact on my faith. And Alan Kant, a wise and extremely patient tutor, a wonderful preacher and a very dear friend. Ultimately, though, the one shepherd on whom I can depend every hour of every day is Jesus. Whenever I need him, he is there, caring about and for me above all else. And the amazing thing is that he is that good shepherd for each and every one of us. Each one is as precious as though we were the only one. When I was thinking about shepherds and flock, um, I thought about the four guinea pigs that live in our back garden. Our daughter cares for them. And a sign for them that their shepherdess, if you like, is near, is the sliding open of the patio door. She doesn't even need to speak. They know if they call out and they squeak, believe me, she will come to them she will talk to them and most importantly she'll feed them. All of their needs are met. Jesus for us is our shepherd, guarding us, leading us through rough times, walking through them with us, bringing rest to our souls, meeting all our needs. He's also the gate to our salvation. We come to God through him, into the flock, into the family of believers. We belong. And just as when a child cries out in the night, mum, dad or carer is right there. The sound of their voice reassuring and comforting. So we are reassured by God's voice that comes to us in so many different ways. It can be through his word through prayer, through a hymn, through nature, certainly through others, and sometimes through the most unexpected and yet perfect way that we need at that particular time. A worship song that I heard live a few years ago at Big Church Day Out and came across again recently is called Perfect Grace, sung by Philippa Hanna. And it's an example of where she heard God in a pop song by Ed Sheeran and she rewrote some of the words to reflect her encounter with God in that song. The society we live in is very much and often governed by expectations and demands. In particular, businesses are geared towards performance, targets and measurable growth and success. There are a few businesses that try to buck that trend and they practice and display the care of community to their own staff and to the community of which they're a part. So 
some of you may have heard of a restaurant business called Mowgli. Its first branch was in Liverpool and it now has several branches in cities around the country. For Mowgli, care of their staff is a priority and they very much speak about the Mowgli family doing what they can to support their staff as they come to work and to support them as family members. But Mowgli also was created with charitable giving as a central pillar to their business. Through the Mowgli Trust, they sponsor a child globally for every full-time employee that they recruit. And each year, the Mowgli Trust raises hundreds of thousands of pounds for charity significantly partnering with charities local to each of their restaurants. So while shepherding their own, they're also spreading that care wider into the communities of which they're a part. Even in churches, we look at growth plans and numbers, don't we? People in pews. But hopefully as part of the Good Shepherd's flock, his community, there's also care and protection safety, love, feeding and fellowship. For the last year, we've not been able to gather physically for worship or fellowship, at least most of us haven't. But we've still managed to gather in ways as the community of Christ, a community united under Christ. God dwells in community with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and he calls us to dwell in community too. Within that community, we're called to love and care for one another. Not always to act in our own best interests again, but for the good of all, for the good of others. It's been good to see how our pastoral system and our sense of church family has offered the opportunity to show that community love and to show that it's not just confined to a church building. Each and every person connected to our church communities has been offered contact and support on a regular basis. But more than that, phone calls and garden visits, emails and cards, all sorts of communication between individual members of our circuit family have helped to maintain that sense of community care, one for another. Virtual coffee mornings have built friendships and online prayer meetings and house groups, Bible journaling have deepened friendships and faith. Opportunities to share our lives and our faith in an open and safe space with others that we might previously have just considered as acquaintances. And even our breakout rooms in our online worship have helped us to get to know others from our circuit family too. But as followers of Jesus, our mission is to find and draw those other sheep into the fold too, that Jesus speaks of in verse 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold and must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Speaking to his audience at the time, he of course meant those that weren't like them, the non-Jews, Gentiles. But more than that, those who weren't perceived as part of their community or flock. People not quite like them, so lepers, prostitutes, tax collectors, Samaritans, women, shepherds even. Those they excluded or who made them feel, at the very least, uncomfortable. You know, the sort of folk Jesus liked to meet with. There's a challenge there for us if we're really honest. Who is outside our church community, our family or sheepfold, if you like, that we might hesitate or feel uncomfortable to draw in or to reach out to? Those on the fringes with different viewpoints, different lifestyles, relationships, sexuality, denomination, belief or faith. Jesus is the gate to the sheepfold 
not us. His arms opened wide on the cross in sacrifice were also open wide in welcome. No exceptions. He knows each one of us inside and out, loves each one of us and calls to us by name. Thank God. And then he sends us out, dare I say it, out of our buildings. We've not had that comfortable security for a while anyway. Out beyond our buildings, but with the support of and the backup of our safe groups where we all know each other. Out to spread the good news. Jesus shows up often for us in many ways, not least through others. If we know that love and care and protection, how can we not share it and display it to others? His love should flow out through us to the people we see and speak to around us in our ordinary everyday lives. Jesus isn't calling us to stand on a street corner on a soapbox and for that I'm thankful but just to intentionally share what Jesus means to us, to share it with those that we share life with in all parts of our life. As I said of the restaurant chain Mowgli, while shepherding their own, they also spread that care wider into the communities of which they are a part. Jesus calls us to draw others to, to him, that we may all be one flock, one family, one community. Diverse, yes, but cared for, loved by each other and loved and saved by him, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Let us pray. May the Good Shepherd be over you to shelter you, under you to uphold you, behind you to direct you, before you to lead you, about you to protect you, ever with you to save you, above you to lift you, and bring you to the green pasture of eternal life. Amen.